Hello, I'm Martin Park. You can call me coach. Welcome to the channel. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to talk about and break down some of the more popular eating and dietary systems that are around at the moment and that people are choosing to follow. A couple of weeks ago, I discussed the keto diet, and today I'm going to talk to you about veganism and the vegan diet. So what is veganism and what is the vegan diet? The vegan society has given two definitions of veganism. One, veganism as a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude, as far as is possible, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing or any other purpose, and by extension promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefits of animals, humans and the environment. And two, in dietary terms, it is the practice of eliminating all foods derived wholly or partly from animals. And for clarity, today I'm not discussing veganism as a philosophy and way of living, although I will touch on it briefly. I'm only looking at the vegan diet in relation to the possibility that it may improve your health and be a viable way to eat. And first, a brief history. And to do that, we first have to look at vegetarianism, as it was through vegetarianism and the vegetarian beliefs and dietary practices that the vegan diet, as we know it in the modern era, came into being. Vegetarianism is the practice of abstaining from the consumption of meat, red meat, poultry, seafood, insects, and the flesh of any other animal. Along with that definition, there are many variations of the vegetarian diet, such as a lacto-vegetarian diet, which includes dairy products but not eggs, an ovo-vegetarian diet, which includes eggs but not dairy products, and a lacto-ovo-vegetarian diet, which includes both eggs and dairy products. Along with the strictest of vegetarian diets, the vegan diet, which excludes all animal products. The earliest records of vegetarianism as a concept and practice amongst a significant number of people are from ancient India, especially among the Hindus and Jains. Later records indicate that small groups within the ancient Greek civilizations in southern Italy and Greece also adopted vegetarian style dietary habits. And in most instances, these early vegetarian diets were closely connected with the idea of non-violence towards animals and were promoted by religious groups and leaders and philosophers. In the modern era, the first written use of the term vegetarian originated in the early 19th century when authors referred to a vegetable regime diet. The earliest published occurrences of the term vegetarian appears to be related to Alcott House, a school in the north side of Ham Common, London, which was opened in July 1838 by James Perrapont Graves. Alcott House and its community were dedicated to a regime of spiritual development and purification. To this end, the members submitted to a lifestyle of early rising, strict vegetarianism, usually raw food, no stimulants, celibacy and simple living, and experimented with various practices such as astrology, hydrotherapy, mesmerism and phrenology. From 1841, Alcott House was known as a Concordium, or Industry Harmony College, from which time the institution began to publish its own pamphlet entitled The Healthian, which provided some of the earliest appearances of the term vegetarian. The term was then popularised with the foundation of the Vegetarian Society in Manchester in 1847. By 1853, it already had 889 members. The Society made available publications on the topic of vegetarianism and sometimes accompanied them by public lectures, and by 1897 its membership had grown to around 5,000. In 1910, C. W. Daniel published an early vegan cookbook written by Rupert H. Weldon titled No Animal Food, Two Essays and 100 Recipes. Over the following decades, the consumption of milk and eggs became a battleground within the vegetarian society and community. During a visit to London in 1931, Mahatma Gandhi, who had joined the Vegetarian Society's executive committee when he lived in London from 1888 to 1891, gave a speech to the society arguing that it ought to promote a meat-free diet as a matter of morality, not health. Lacto and lacto ovo vegetarians acknowledged the ethical consistency of the vegan position, but regarded a vegan diet as unworkable and were concerned that it might be an impediment to spreading vegetarianism. In August 1944, several members of the Vegetarian Society asked that a section of its newsletter be devoted to non-dairy vegetarianism. 
When the request was denied, Donald Watson, a woodwork teacher and the secretary of the Leicester branch of the Vegetarian Society, set up a new quarterly newsletter titled The Vegan News, which later changed its name to The Vegan, marking the birth of the Vegan Society. He based the word vegan on the first three and the last two letters of the word vegetarian because, in his opinion, it marked the beginning and end of the vegetarian movement. So the term vegan was specifically created to describe this philosophy and practice of abstaining from all animal-derived products, not just as a dietary choice, but also as a way of living. This distinction became the cornerstone of veganism, creating a complete split off from the vegetarian society and their beliefs, and as such making it a distinct movement with its own set of principles and beliefs. So that is a brief history. From a nutritional standpoint, is there anything good about the vegan diet? For some people, yes, there is. If you go on a well-designed vegan diet that is fortified with supplemental nutrients to meet the nutritional deficiencies that are inherent in a vegan diet, then it can be a viable option. If you are someone that is currently following a typical Western diet that is full of nutrient-deficient, highly processed foods, then switching to a well-designed vegan diet that is fortified with supplemental nutrients, it can be a viable option, and one that in this instance would be a preferable diet to follow, as there would be a marked improvement of your overall well-being. So what isn't there to like about the vegan diet? Well, let's break it down, and once again, this is only in relation to the possibility that the vegan diet may improve your health and be a viable long-term way to eat. The primary problem with a vegan diet in relation to achieving optimum health and well-being via our food sources is that, as pointed out earlier, the vegan diet was never designed to be a healthy diet. It was designed to attempt to stop all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals. Veganism and the vegan diet have more in common with a political system than a well thought out and empirically tested dietary system. Viewed in these terms, veganism is a collective action aimed at political transformation, a form of political activism, and as a philosophy, the commitment of veganism to strive to eliminate all forms of cruelty to animals is one that is worth striving for, and one that along with all the other groups and societies that are trying to achieve the same thing, I applaud. But veganism isn't and never was created to be an optimal long-term dietary system that will produce abundant health in humans. And it doesn't matter how many books or documentaries are written and made to attempt to promote the vegan diet to be one that is perfect and ideal and the right and true way of eating for all humans, as at its core it never was and never will be. Can you live indefinitely on a vegan diet that does not include fortified foods or added supplements and remain in optimal health? No, you cannot. So is there a better option for overall health and well-being? For most people, yes, there is. And I say most people because even though I pointed out the potential negatives of the vegan diet, for some people it is still a viable option, as long as you are aware of the difficulties and shortcomings and are well prepared with your supplemental add-ons that have been tailored to meet your specific needs. And this is not easy and is something that cannot be overlooked, as if you do, you will inevitably become deficient in some or many essential nutrients and then you will suffer unnecessarily due to that. I've seen this happen many times where someone just jumps onto the vegan save the animals bandwagon and overnight they cut out all the animal products from their diet and in doing so they create daily deficiencies in numerous nutrients. I have a previous podcast that discusses one of these people and the struggles that they created for themselves. I will leave a link in the description. For everyone else who is just considering the vegan diet from a purely nutritional standpoint and are not all that sure whether it is something that they should follow, then I would suggest that you don't start on the vegan diet. Instead, I would recommend that you follow a more conventional eating regime by eating a balanced diet containing all the nutrient-dense food options that are available in a well-structured omnivore or vegetarian diet. Three final things. One, you don't need to be on a vegan diet to cut out all refined and junk foods and processed meats and other highly processed foods of animal origin. You can just choose to avoid all those foods and instead eat all the whole food versions. Two, you don't have to be on a vegan diet to eat a huge variety and quantity of plant-based foods and get all the benefits that can come along with this way of eating. You just have to make the effort to cut way back on the animal food choices and increase the plant-based food choices.
And three, you don't have to be a vegan to be an animal rights activist. There are many different ways that people can advocate for animal welfare and rights, and being vegan is just one of them. Ultimately, the decision to be a vegan or not is a personal one and should be based on an individual's beliefs and values. If you do choose to follow the vegan lifestyle, then you have my respect. But please take on board what I put forward here in regard to providing your body with everything that your body needs to thrive on a daily basis. Should you need my assistance with this, then I'll leave a link in the description. If you have any questions, then please leave them in the comments. I thank you for listening, and I look forward to spending some time with you again. Bye for now.